Wade Hochweide, Phyllis Webstad, Rents Quest. Hello everyone, my name is Phyllis Webstad. I'm from the Strachem Chatlam First Nation, Kennel Creek, Dog Creek. I've always wanted to tell the story of how Orange Shirt Day started and thank all of you for participating in Orange Shirt Day across Canada and beyond. The story of the Orange Shirt is the story of the Indian residential school system and its impacts on Indigenous people. I hope to outline the devastating effect these enforced laws had on individuals and by extension on the communities they came from. Gukbi or Chief Red Robbins from the Eskadam First Nation or Alkali Lake. He is the chief of the White Earth people. Gukbi Robbins had a vision. He wanted Indigenous people or First Nation people in the Caribou Chilcotin in the Williams Lake area, the 15 bands that surround Williams Lake, as well as the non-Indigenous to come together. That was his vision that uh, everyone learn about the St. Joseph Indian Residential School, the history of that school. What began as a way to get Indigenous and non-Indigenous people together in the Caribou Chilcotin turned into Orange Shirt Day, what it is today. The following video is Gukbi Robbins speaking to the Chamber of Commerce in Williams Lake, BC, where he's inviting everyone to come and be a witness to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission events that were to be held in May of 2013. I'm here to talk about a uh, commemoration project with the Truth and Reconciliation that I put forward uh, almost 10 months ago to the day. This project is uh, dealing with the impacts and the effects of the uh, St. Joseph's Residential School. I don't know how many of you here know that there was a residential school here in the Williams Lake area. The St. Joseph's Mission Residential School operated for nearly a century in Williams Lake First Nation lands with students drawn primarily from the 15 First Nations in the Caribou region. The official dates for the school are July 19th, 1891 to June 30th, 1981. One of the quotes that I like to use came from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission by a lady the name of Marie Wilson. We have been taught to be comfortably blind to the need when it's in our midst. I'm a residential school survivor. I'm going to go into a bit of my history. I was sexually assaulted when I was seven years old at this school. I see those exit signs, those right there with the red light. And I reflect back, if all the lights went out here, you'd find me cowering in a corner, simply because that represents sexual abuse to me. Hearing that door latch open at that exit sign, I knew someone was coming to sexually abuse me. I was number 85 for three years at that school. I was never a name. All of my clothes, I had two sets of clothes. One play clothes, one school clothes. Every one of them had number 85 on it. Two pairs of socks, one pair of shoes, one jacket, number 85. That's just a small experience that I remember at this school. A lot of my friends have committed suicide for what we've seen at this school. St. Joseph's Residential School. We need to recognize that and reconcile because it's still impacting the First Nations in the neighboring communities. I never had a mom growing up from the age of seven till I was 14. I never had a dad growing up. They were both residential school survivors. When that school closed, I moved into a home where I was physically abused on a regular basis because I didn't pick up my socks, because I didn't fold my pants, because I didn't put the towel where it should be when it's dirty. Some of those things, simply because my parents were residential school survivors, that's how they were taught and that's how they taught me. I thank God today that my wife didn't attend this school because she is the mother and the father of my children. 
she's the disciplinary and you know I thank her every day there are over 600 First Nations survivors of residential schools in and around the 15 bands of the Williams Lake. There are individuals out there that can't speak about these things. You may see them on a regular basis. You may be, even be working with them. You may sell them a car, you may sell them a loaf of bread, but by the end of the day, you don't know what this person has lived through. I am 46 years old. I am a residential school survivor. I was sexually and physically assaulted. I was told I was a First Nations, I was an Indian that wasn't worthy of an education. I hate to say it, but the education I got at residential school was a lot better than what they were giving me on the reserve. On the INAC DIA run schools, they brought in people that couldn't even speak English to teach English. I went to the residential school expecting the back of someone's hand to be taught. I didn't receive that. I sat right up front because I didn't know any other children there. I looked up, there was this beautiful blonde lady, long flowing hair. She was pretty. I fell in love with her. She never beat me. She never hit me. She never assaulted me in any way. That's a positive story about my education at this residential school. But the school itself where they housed me, that building that held so much pain and anguish, sexual, physical assault, discrimination, that's the place that I want to forget. But I can't do it without the help of other residential school survivors. And that's where this commemoration project is going to start coming forward. It's going to help us build relationships with one another, First Nations and non-First Nations, create an opportunity to see the history of the First Nations people as the First Nations people who have lived it. The events are being planned through an inclusive planning committee comprised of former students, First Nations chiefs, councillors, tribal councils, municipal and regional government leaders and staff, educators from the school district and Sokomich School and the RCMP and other local groups. There will be a number of events happening in this spring. Uh, the commemoration of St. Joseph's Residential School and provide a foundation for ongoing shared work of healing and reconciliation in the Caribou region. The project itself, the commemoration events will include Friday, April 26th is the kickoff event and will be focused on the Indian Residential School experience as part of the School District 27's Professional Development Day. We see these events as being uniquely designed to meet the needs of First Nations and non-First Nations alike in the Caribou region. This includes the inclusion of neighboring municipalities regional government in participating in the rec reconciliation process, involvement of the public school district local university for a series of activities, and the use of the university facilities for the conference events. Unveiling of two monuments, one at the former site in memory of those who didn't make, didn't make it to the healing journey and for all of those that are affected. And the second, a similar sister monument in Williams Lake Spotania Park dedicated to the shared journey of reconciliation. Saturday and Sunday, May 18th and 19th, 2013, there will be a reunion for former students. These events are part of an ongoing healing and reconciliation dialogue with the Caribou region. Examples of ideas being considered include having First Nations and municipal governments proclaiming a given day as an annual residential school recognition and reconciliation day, convening an annual leadership forum on that day each year to discuss the state of reconciliation in the entire Caribou region. So I believe we have enough funds to cover the costs of two monuments. We have enough funds to cover the costs of bringing in our guest speakers. And those are Sean Atlio, National Chief, Grand Chief Stuart Phillip, Grand Chief Ed John, 
Regional Chief Jody Wilson-Raybould. We also have Murray Sinclair of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission coming out to do a presentation about reconciliation and what it means to First Nations. I think it's very important that we include our non-First Nations, especially here in the city of Williams Lake. You know, I look at this and I think to myself that this is a one-of-a-kind commemoration on reconciliation, simply because it's the only one across Canada that includes non-First Nations to be active participants in the reconciliation. In 2006, I had a reunion at the residential school site and it was a unity ride with all the First Nations in and around the area to meet at the site. And the RCMP participated with the Royal Commission of coming out and they had an apology read by the RCMP. You may not be aware of this, but the RCMP was given the authority by the federal government to go to the First Nations communities and remove children, to take them from their communities. If you can imagine a community of 40 people in 1891 with 60 children, removing the children, can you imagine what that would do to that community? Can you imagine what that would do to the children? So the reconciliation needs to happen. And I'm putting it to the city of Williams Lake and the regional district to come and participate with that reconciliation. This project means more to me than I think it does to the Truth and Reconciliation Group. And it should mean more to you than it does to the Truth and Reconciliation Group. This is your backyard. This is some of the history that happened here. Please, I invite you to come and participate. Please be there because it'll mean more to the First Nations than it, than it would to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, being patient with me and giving me the opportunity to speak about this very important project. Chief Fred Robbins' vision was to create positive, long-lasting change and harmony among Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples within Williams Lake and throughout the Caribou region. Beginning with the history of the First Nations and non-First Nations, remembering what has gone on in our Canadian history and how the relationship developed over the past 500 years. Encourage a process of recovery for both Indigenous people and general society to heal the injustice that was committed and to reconcile society with our past, our present, and work together to build a better future for all of Canada. Reconciliation aims to create a new legacy for Indigenous Canadians that supports a healing journey and sees a respectful resurgence of cultural traditions. Reconciliation is also the process whereby Canadian society recognizes an equal partnership between Indigenous people and their customs and the dominant culture derived from the European and Roman law. The only way to achieve Indian residential school reconciliation is to acknowledge the true history, to learn from it, no matter how difficult. Everyone has a part to play. I am humbled and honored that you are all taking part in Orange Shirt Day. Gooks Jim, thank you. <laughs>